Well, in January of 2020, I realized um, I'm, my patients are going to have a lot of questions about this. And I really wanted to be able to give them answers because I wasn't going to rely on what the CDC had to say. And so I started reading about the SARS um, epidemic that had occurred 20 years earlier, almost 20 years earlier, um, and the MERS um, epidemic. So I could understand what was happening with the biology of these um, of these kind of devastating coronaviruses, which are so different in the way they affect people than the more common coronaviruses, which cause like the common cold, for example. And um, by March, I had already formulated a concept of these are the things that are going on and these are the things that we can do to help people protect themselves when they're exposed, if they get infected. And so I started putting a protocol together. Uh, it was based upon uh, my understanding, which started with the SARS research, that when the body, when this virus enters your cells, it uses a receptor called ACE2. And my original thought was, oh, let's find a way to block ACE2. Then I realized, no, that's not a good idea because ACE2 is a vitally important enzyme. And a lot of the damage that's done happens because this enzyme gets destroyed in the course of the infection. So I started out from the perspective of we need to support ACE2 and to help people recover from this. I actually think that was the right perspective because very, very few of the hundreds of patients that I've treated who had COVID-19 um, went on to develop long COVID, I'd say under 1%. Whereas, you know, I mean, the numbers uh, range anywhere from about 10 to 50% in the studies that have been done. Uh, Wait, you're and saying that 10 to 15, 50% of people go on to develop long COVID. Go illness, on to develop long people. COVID. Yeah, a recent um, a meta-analysis looking at num number of many studies in children who were thought to be pretty immune to, to long COVID found that 16% of children were still symptomatic three months later. So, um, so that's how I started. Um, and I've really, since then, I've spent almost 4,000 hours studying the biology of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the pathophysiology of COVID-19. Um, after several months had gone by, I started looking at the interactions with the gut microbiome. There were a lot of speculation about this, but no data earlier in the pandemic. By the end of 2020, there was actual data. So I put something together on that. And um, there was so much information. It was so overwhelming that I realized the only way I could I could really organize it and understand it was to write it and to try and teach it to other people. So in February of 2020, I started posting a document on my website called, I, I don't remember what I called it in those days, but it had several, I, I kept uh, amending it as time went on. Mm -hmm. About a year into the pandemic, I realized that the biggest challenge was going to be long COVID. It was, it was obvious by the spring of 2020 that there were people who did not recover, who had, and that many people had ongoing inflammation that lasted for a long time after the acute infection. Um, and so going back to the spring, I guess the spring of 2021, really started to focus on the problems of long COVID and the research that was coming out. And there's been a load of research by January of 2022, I had come up with a graphic image. Now, I put this image together to help me understand what I was learning, but I, it is, I think, a very useful teaching tool for, um, to explain to both um, patients and to health professionals the intricacies of what goes on with long COVID. And because um, it's certainly not simple. But I think one of the most harmful things in the public communication about it has been 
this idea that comes out, oh, this is a mysterious illness. We don't know what's causing it. And I mean, people are really panicked about it. And, and that's not really true, actually. We know a lot about what goes into causing long COVID, about the mechanisms, the physiology. Um, it just happens to be very complicated. Um, but, but that doesn't mean it's not actionable. And, and my perspective really from the beginning was, how do I find things that are accessible to my patients that will take away this fear that there's this monster looming over me that, um, you know, uh, that's like a tsunami. Um, and mysterious, and, too. Like, that's one thing I was going to bring up. Yeah. There's this myth that I was perfectly healthy and now I'm a mess. Like, I have no energy anymore. Like, that's not really, that is a myth because there, it's very clear all the different things that are going on. And your web, your, your illustration that you created is, is perfect for if somebody wants to go quickly to the website, drgallon.com.